Hi and welcome. In this tutorial we will go through the wall module. You will learn the following. How to draw a wall. How to set default settings. Change current wall properties. Add a stud, nog, opening and other elements to a wall. I will also share some tips and tricks. Let's get started with a brief introduction to the icons related to this tutorial. This is the mainframe builder tool set. From here you will access the various modules, such as walls, floor, and roofs to mention a few. Click on this icon to open up the wall tool set. You will be presented with a new toolbar. This toolbar has all the functions related to designing wall frames. This includes icons to access subset tools for windows, doors, bracing, to mention a few. Hover over the icons to reveal the tool tip. This will help you determine the function of each of the icons in this toolset. Click on the first icon to draw a standard wall frame. You will be presented with a properties pop-up window. We will go through some of the properties and features in a short while. Click OK to start drawing your first wall. Select the first reference point for the start of your wall. Now select the second reference point for the end of your wall. You now can dynamically select the height of the wall or enter the value for the height. Note, you can switch of the dynamic height feature in the default properties, which we will go through in a little while. With the dynamic height switched off, it will automatically set the height to the default value in the properties. Let's draw another wall to show you once more. Congratulations on drawing your first wall. We will now quickly review some of the basic properties. For more advanced options, please refer to the user training manual which you can download from www.framebuildermrd.com web link. The default properties settings are divided into standard and advanced settings. To access the standard default settings, click the cog icon second last from the end of the wall tool set. You will be presented with pop-up properties window. Let's go through some of the basic properties. The following common properties can be set as default. Wall height, stud and nog spacing as well as pull wall height. Pull wall height refers to the dynamic wall height feature which allows you to dynamically set the wall height when drawing your wall. This is especially useful when drawing frames for staircases. Something to keep in mind. You can also set the pitch for other style of walls, such as a gable wall. To access the wall, you can select the gable wall icon, which is the second one from the beginning of the wall tool set. Once the default settings has been saved it will now appear in the properties window as default when you want to draw a wall. I will now demonstrate how the changes are reflected. I will change the wall height default settings and the pull height default settings and attempt to draw a wall.
We will now learn how to add nogs, studs and openings to a standard wall. To get started, draw a standard wall. Select the wall tool set. Then you will click on the wall you wish to add a stud to. Click on the Add a Stud to Wall icon. You will be presented with a pop-up properties window. Select the position offset for the stud you wish to add. As demonstrated next. This will be offset either to the left, right or center. Click on the point where you wish to add the stud. You will note, based on your selection the stud will be placed either to the left, right or center. Now let's add a nog to the wall. The process will be the same as that for adding a stud. You will select the offset property and place your nog appropriately. will now add an opening we in this example we will add a door to the wall you will use the same process to add a window first select the wall you wish to add the door opening to select the walls tool set then select the add a door icon you will be presented with a door subset toolbar I will give you a brief introduction to each of the icons the first icon from the left allows you to add an opening to a door the second icon allows you to change properties of an existing opening in the selected wall frame. The third icon allows you to move the selected opening in the selected wall frame. The fourth icon allows you to delete an opening in the selected wall frame. Finally, the last icon allows you to set default properties for windows. You can preset properties such as width, height, header configuration and more for a door opening. Great. We now will add a door opening to a wall frame. We will use the default settings for now for this demonstration. Click on the first blue icon from the right. You will be presented with a pop-up properties window. We will briefly go through some of the key properties after we insert our first door opening. Click on OK to place the opening in the selected wall frame. Move the mouse pointer to area of the frame you want to add the opening to. You will note the colored door opening highlighted guide is either offset to the left, right or center. You can change this offset in the properties before adding the door. After you have selected the position of your door opening, double click your mouse button to add the opening to that position. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Wonderful! Now let's go through some of the key properties for the door opening properties. You will note the properties are divided into different sections. The first one being design options. You will find all properties related to the design and configuration of the door opening. Please refer to the user training manual for more detail on each of the properties listed. The second section is clearances. You will find all properties related to clearances for each of the main or member or profiles. For example, jam stud to bottom plate clearance, jam stud to top plate clearance, header brace clearance to mention a few. Next, I will show you how to add bracing to a wall. First select the wall you wish to insert the bracing into. Then, 
Select the wall tool set. Click on the brace icon to add a brace to your selected wall. You will be presented with a pop-up properties window. I will go through some of the main properties. Lateral bracing refers to the types of bracing configuration you can choose from. We will be using plate to stud K bracing in this demonstration. Clearances properties refer to the edge clearance for each of the bracing profiles. You can tweak this according to your needs or specifications. Let's get started. Position your cursor between the studs the bracing will be inserted into. Note, the bracing start position is determined by the position relative to the closest stud upon insertion. Pay special attention to the difference when I insert a brace. Next we will learn how to add an electrical or general mounting point. First, select a wall. Now click electrical tools icon. Let's go through some of the icons in this tool set related to wall frames. Hover over the icons for the tilt tip. This will help you determine the function for the different icons. The first icon from the left in green allows you to insert a standard plug junction box or switch configuration into a wall. The second icon from the left in blue allows you edit an existing configuration. The third icon from the left in maroon allows you to move an existing configuration. The fourth icon from the left allows you to delete an existing configuration. The last icon on the right is the default settings. Let's insert a standard plug point configuration. Click on the first icon to the left to add this configuration to the selected wall. I will go through some of the key properties. Device type, this property allows you to select the type of component that will be inserted into the selected wall. For example, this could be plug box, junction box or a switch box. Note the following, these components are pulled from existing components defined and stored in your user profile folder under the subfolder components. These folders can be found in the root plugins folder frame builder MRD folder. You can design your own components that will appear in this list and can be inserted into the wall. Please contact frame builder MRD support for further guidelines on this subject. Let's proceed. The next property is the height. This refers to the position the configuration is placed at. Click OK to add a device to the selected wall. Select a position between two studs to insert the selected device configuration. Next we will learn how to add custom profiles to a wall. Click on the wall tool set. Then click on this icon to add a custom profile to a wall. You have two options. The first option is to select the start point and end point of the profile that will be placed within the wall. The second option is to draw a line using SketchUp's pencil to lawn points you want the profile to be added. You will then select the wall and the line and click on this icon to generate the profile within the wall. I will now demonstrate both options. Please pay attention.
Okay I guess I went a bit crazy towards the end. Some would say, I lost the plot. But this was to give you an idea of how powerful this option is. You could use this option to make custom pockets for trusses. Make fancy archways within a wall. Insert bracing in key areas. The sky is the limit. This covers the basic functions of the wall tool set. We will be covering more features in the next tutorial 2.2 wall tool set. This will include how to add root services and punch holes into wall frames. How to add custom tooling points within a frame and much more. Speaking of services. Here is a joke. What did the plumber tell his loyal client? I will give you a second to think about it. Okay here is the answer. Hold on to something. This is going to be a funny joke. The plumber said. Every time you flush your toilet, you put food in my children's mouths. The next joke will be better. I promise. Take care and goodbye.